Welcome everyone. My name is Laura Stranks. I'm an independent Stampin' Up! demonstrator and I live here in Brisbane, Queensland, Australia. I've lived in Brisbane all my life and love the weather here. Um, it's a little bit cool in the mornings at the moment but through the day we're having lovely weather. Um, I just want to first off start by thanking everyone this is my second YouTube video, the last one I did um, last week. And I just want to thank everyone for all their lovely comments and everyone that subscribed. Um, I got an amazing response, so I was really happy with that. Um, we've been having some beautiful weather lately. It gets up some, oh, a couple of weeks ago it was um, a little bit cool, but now we're up to about 24 degrees, 22, 24 degrees during the day. So that's lovely weather here. It's not too cold. A bit chilly in the mornings, but other than that, it's really nice. Um, I'm guessing most of you have seen what's in the new mini catalogue. And I'm just going to do a create a card today using the picture this um, dies, which are in the annual catalogue. Um, this is the card, the one of the cards I've created. I'm doing a different one today with different, um, same pack of DSP, but a different um, pattern. This one I've used the circles. The picture this dies are on page 173 in your current annual catalogue. And you get two dies in the set. One cuts out the circle pieces, which is those and the other cuts out rectangles. Um, there's quite a few different ways you can create a card with this as well. And as I mentioned, the new mini catalogue, um, I haven't purchased much yet out of the new mini. It's a little bit early for me for Christmas to think about Christmas cards yet. So, but I did like on page, it's towards the back of the book. I can't show you inside the book. Um, it's on page 65 in the new mini catalogue and it's called, um, remember, remember, Splendid Day. It's a 12 by 12 DSP. Now you'll probably get a little bit of a shine off this. I'll just pull out some of the pages out of the pack for you. And this is what I'm using today. I've chosen this colour, the one I've done the card already is that one. The backs, all these fronts are in a foil finish, whereas the backs are just um, ordinary plain, if that's a word. Uh, that They're all very pretty. There's all different colours in them. Uh, that's the copper one. This beautiful green, um, I think that's soft sea foam. Not sure. I'll have a look on the back in a sec. And lovely lovely patterns um, there is a stamp set that goes with it as well I didn't get the stamp set out um, but I haven't um, haven't purchased the stamp set yet um, I've only purchased the paper I'm just holding off till July when the next quarter starts um, splendid day it's got calypso coral copper fresh freesia petal pink pool party Sahara sand and soft sea foam. So they're beautiful paper. I love that. Um, and it's not Christmassy, so I'm not into Christmas yet. <laughs> Bit early for me. Um, so we'll just get started. This is the card I created the other day. Um, and I used the circles. And I've also gone back to my favourite, my first video. I used these charming sentiments. They're in the... Um, new mini catalogue, oh, mm, can't remember whether they're in the mini, or I think they're in the mini, um, if not they're in the annual catalogue, uh, and you get the dies to cut out each of the, actually they are in the mini, you get the, the dies to cut out each of the um, sentiments on the, on the stamp. Um, I've also added some little decorations on this as well. When you cut out this, you get these circles that are left over. So you can use them for something else. I've also embossed, which I don't know if you can see, I embossed the background with 
um, Pretty Flowers, I think it's called. Yes, the Pretty Flowers. It's not a current one. Um, it's retired, I think, at the moment, but it's one that you could use any dye. I just like it when it's not so plain at the back. It's nice if it's got a bit of embossing on it. So that's that one. Now we'll get on to today's. That's one of that's the dye we're using today, and that's the one that I used on this one, which cuts out the circles. So we'll just get started. I'll leave that up there. Now I have this. Um, I have printed my last YouTube video, and I'm still new to this, so I wasn't sure how to go about it. My granddaughter's coming over again this afternoon <clears throat> just to run me through a couple of things. Um, so I did type this up. These are the measurements for today. If you want to take a screenshot, I'll put that in the middle of the thing. <clears throat> I will type them in the, um, in the description of the video, but if you want to, um, a quick way... Uh, rather than writing them all down is um, if you want to take a screenshot of that they're the measurements for the card I'm doing today and the colors and everything um, <clears throat> you'll see as we go it's not that difficult to do my voice seems to go croaky doing this <laughs> I'll just take another drink anyhow <clears throat> I'll leave that aside but I'll just check with my daughter what's a quicker way of inserting the measurements in the description of the video. Now, what I've got here, um, and I'll refer to each of these as we go. Um, my card base, it's a standard card base here for Australia. And what I do, um, I an A4 sheet, and you just measure across um, to... It's just under 15 centimetres across and then it's um, half, that gives you half your A4. Then you just, that, so, so your A4 runs this way and you've got half of it. And then you just score it down at 10.5 centimetres and that gives you your card base. And that's how I do all my um, bases. And that way you can get two out of an A4 sheet. So that's that piece. Um, my mat, my first mat, is um, just basic white, and that one is five and five eighths by three and seven eighths, and I'm just leaving that plain because you're only going to see a little bit around the edge. I'm doing it a bit different to this one where you've got the DSP around the edge. This one I've put a white mat underneath. That's my inside mat, which is the same size, and it's a strip of DSP, which is five and five eighths by three and three quarters of an inch and I'll slot that inside for after. Now the um the die this piece here is um fresh freesia and it's five and three eighths by three and five eighths so it's another size down. All these are one eighth inch smaller and also my DSP is the same size you can trim a little bit off the DSP because you want it to fit underneath that so you don't see it. All you're going to see is these cutout slots. I've run that through the um, Big Shot, uh, not Big Shot anymore, cut and emboss machine. <laughs> um, and I ran it through another embossing folder. These, I've marked the ones that are current, but this one's not again. It's the um, Meadow Moments and you get two two embossing folders in the pack and there um, I've used this one with the leaves and the butterflies on the other one is more of a border one um, I don't know if anyone you can use any I, I just thought it lined up nicely with this DSP but I'm sure any embossing folder would work even if you just use your um, brick and mortar uh, any of those sort of ones would look nice I just th thought I think it just takes the plainness off the off the background so what I've done now there's a couple of ways you can do this I'm going to use my foam adhesive strips to layer it up now you can layer up just this frame here 
or you can layer up, put, attach that to that, adhere it to that, or and then put your adhesive strips on the back of that, or you can adhere just this up with the strips and have that flat down so that the frame itself um, comes up. I'm going to attach this only because of the ribbon I'm using today. I'm going to attach that to the DSP and then I'm going to put the strips on and put this um, up. I've got to remember to put my piece of ribbon across as well. I'm going to use this um, metallic mesh ribbon and I'll show you in a minute how I'm going to do that. I've just got two small pieces there. So we shall go with that. Now I've already put my, um, just to save a bit of time and it also gets a bit messy, put my uh, tear and tape on the back. I always use tear and tape when I've got something that's embossed. I find glue doesn't um, fit too well in all the little groovy bits and it, um, it doesn't sit as well. And it's the same with snail. And I like something a little bit stronger that's going to hold it down. With these smaller bits here, I've just attached them and then trimmed off the edge. So I'm just going to attach this to the DSP section. Make sure I get this in the right order. And we won't do a boo-boo today. I hope everybody's well wherever you are in the world. I've made a few friends. Um, well, there's a lot, have uh, quite a few have subscribed to my channel, which is lovely. And if you enjoy what you see today, don't forget to subscribe. The button is below the, the video. Um, at the moment, I'm not recording live. I'm recording and then I'm going to upload. I'm still getting my granddaughter to come and show me a few other things this afternoon actually and so we can um work on the next the next step of what i need to learn she's very clever she um she's a high school teacher she's only just started this year but um she's a lovely girl all my grandkids are i've got four grandchildren and they're all beautiful kids now I'm putting the wider section at the top because that's where I'm going to put my greeting. So I'm going to lay this over this way. I find this easier than trying to um, straddle it over the top of something I can't see. And then I'm going to lay this on top of here. Now it, I've cut it so it's exactly the same size as it. If you're not comfortable with fitting it in there, um, just trim a fraction off. I, I must have trimmed a fraction off this because it's... Um, a little bit short on the ends but you won't see that anyway and I've got it flush with the top so that's how that works I'll just straighten that little bit there make it a little bit crooked I do like it better the other way where the where it's dropped down in but this works just as well now this here is going to go on here but I'm going to put it up with the strip dimension, the strip um, adhesive strips, foam head adhesive strips, so that it fits the whole the whole piece up. If you did this with your on on the frame itself, um, you'd need to put um, these through the centres as well to hold the whole thing up. I'm going to put some little bits in the centre of this as well. off it was a little bit chilly here this morning but it's nice now my hubby's away at the moment he only for a few days he's um, where I live um, further north is Fraser Island and my brother has a house over there and he has gone just over there for a few days they're doing some maintenance on the house maybe a bit of fishing <laughs> loves his fishing loves his golf 
so but it's nice and quiet here um all my children have grown up so uh they have children of their own but they don't live too far away so i get to see them quite often now i'm going to take the backs off these which i can do with my fingernails partway through helping another lady, another demonstrator, organise a charity day in August this year. And um, yes, it's my first time helping host an event of this sort. I do my workshops and classes here at home. Um, I've got quite a nice little group that come to workshops and then another little tiny group that we do a little bit more uh, not so simple cards but not a lot of heat embossing and still a bit of die cutting but no fancy folds and things like that whereas my workshops um, they're quite a bit more detailed so that's going to go on here and I'm going to try and center it as best I can where I need it now I've got this as I said before I've got that larger section to the top and excuse my head if it's in the road. I'm just going to center that on that there. Which I think that's pretty close. And that looks quite nice layered up like that as well. Then, and I knew I would, oh no, I can put the ribbon still under. I've left this center piece here not stuck down so I can attach my ribbon. Um, I've got the two pieces here. Well, I, I could have put this underneath the the fresh freesia, but it'll now go under the white because I did forget to, to do that. But this is just going to go across here. And all I'm going to do, I'm going to put a bit of um, snail at the back here where it joins at the back. So it will be about there. And I'll attach the ribbon to that. I think I've put that down a little bit too low. It won't matter how much snail I've got on here because this is going to get attached to the card base. So I'm just going to, what I was doing was, because this is so wide, I don't want it that wide. I'm just folding it inwards like that into three. And then I'm going to put that over the back there I'm not sticking the middle down because it's going to have another piece tied around it and that that snail will hold or the stamp and seal will hold it at the back just gives it a little bit of bling on the back there then I'm going to with the other piece I'm going to tie a knot I'm going to tie it underneath the um, frame as well. And it's just, I've cut it just long enough. I was going to put another strip across there of this, but I decided not to. I liked it better this way. Gives it a nice bit of detail. And I'm going to tie a knot because I think that will slip undone eventually if I don't. And it sits nicely like that. I might just trim the ends a tiny bit with my other scissors I have special scissors for my ribbon that I don't cut anything else and I've got a piece of ribbon on it to remind me which ones they are um, that way I don't cut card and tape and everything else they don't get sticky and they don't get blunt um, if, you, if you have a special pair of scissors just for that I try and keep um, certain pairs for certain things I've got quite a few quite a collection of scissors that I use um, one pair I've got just for sticky stuff if I'm cutting sticky stuff and the other are mainly for cardstock or if you're um, fussy cutting so that's how I've decorated that then it's going to go on the front of this card base I'll put my greeting on in a sec So I'm just going to use Tombow for this because it's already layered up and I don't want to push down on the 
on the base on the mat here with by using um snail and i do like my tombow but i do lately i preferred the preferred the seal plus or the seal not seal plus with that um where we put this onto the dsp instead of using the tear and tape you could use the seal plus it's quite strong as well but i do i've always liked the tear and tape for 3D things and projects. So that's that. Then the greeting, and I'm going to put the greeting flat because I've already got it up quite high. I, I always think about postage here. If your card is too thick and these strip dimension strip um, adhesive strips, they are thicker than a dimensional. So you've got to be careful if you're posting. It's okay if you're just handing a card out to someone but if you're posting it's good that you um not make it too thick so i'm just going to glue this down and i know it's going on to that embossed piece but it should be okay to hold it make sure it's straight and that's that one i do like this color too might just put a tiny little bit more under there because you can see it. What I, what I mentioned before about it, it takes a little bit to stick, but it will stick eventually. That's that. And then the inside, again, all I've done is put this DSP strip only because I haven't got the, the stamp set that goes with this paper yet. When I get that, um, I can always stamp inside. So I'm just going to put a strip of DSP down inside this is three quarters of an inch wide sometimes I just do half inch I don't go much ever much thicker than three quarters of an inch I think this is wide enough and leave a bit of a white border down the edge And a little bit more Tombow in the back. Try not to keep, get my Tombow too close to the edge because I don't put a lot on. Um, if it oozes out, then you end up with glue everywhere. So the strip's going to go down on the inside of the card, like on the, towards the centre of the card. If you do a landscape card, I usually just put it down this way, which is what I've done with this one. I've put it down on the inside. Then I'm going to decorate it just with um, the basic rhinestone basic jewels because I've got that silver there and I think these will go nicely. I haven't got a... Oh, yes, that pack's open. I've got a little container... I put all my um, jewels and um, gems and embellishments in these. They don't sell them anymore, but these thick cases, um, and each one has their own case because I'm not a fan of having all your embellishments into one container and then you've got to shuffle through and sort them. So um, I label them all, and that's just old DSP. I All of them have got their own covers. Um doesn't matter what you use you just get a cut a piece of 12 by 12 and it slots around in under this this um sleeve and because i don't sell i i do sell some of my retired um stamp sets and dies when they retire because i can't i can't haven't got the space to keep them all here plus so i can buy more <laughs> um i sell a lot but jewels and uh, some of the DSP I sell, ribbon I don't sell much of, but when it retires, I leave it blank and any new ones or any that go into the new catalogues, I put a little sticker on there. So when I'm doing a workshop, I, I only use um, current products. I put, I know when I pull one out, what I'm gonna, whatever I'm going to use, um, I just head for the, that's what I didn't do with the folders. Because all my folders are in 
pockets like this and they stand up in a box so I can see the name of the folder uh, and all the all the folders are also named so they go back in the right pockets and I keep the the packaging that goes with it so if I ever decide to sell these I've got all the packaging as well and then I can just take these labels off I also um, another little hint um, I put on here what plates you use because when I, I when I do workshops the girls stand there and say what do I put on what, what do I put this through the, the machine with so on here these are, are thin ones so I put um, two by clear so that's two clear plates with the 3d ones I've got one by gray plate which is the new gray plate that we use so then they just pick that up and they know which plate to use or whatever the embossing folder they're working with so that's and this one here that I use it's too clear and the name is there only because then I know where to put it back when I put it away I'm very anal <laughs> with um labeling everything if you've seen my cupboard um everything's in its place everything's labeled my hubby's just finished putting some more shelves in my um in my storage cupboard here now I'm just going to scatter these around I'm going to use the big ones so they stand out a little bit and I'm going to put five I always put odd numbers sometimes three most of the time I use three but sometimes I'm going to move that one a little bit I'll put it down here there we go and that is that and that is both my cards I hope you like that um, I will shimmer spray those later sometimes foil doesn't go real well with the shimmer spray also with this first one that I did um, the sample one it's the dimension the um, the adhesive strips are sitting the just the frame up and not the hot not the DSP as well so they're both done differently this one, um, the whole frame is sitting up. So I hope you like those cards. Um, give me a thumbs up and a like if you if you like my video. And I would love to um, catch up with some of you somewhere around someday. And um, thanks for watching. I think that's all I have to do. Oh, don't forget all the measurements will be in the video when I talk to my granddaughter this afternoon. Um, stay safe and I hope to catch you all again next week. Bye for now. See ya.